Welcome to a new Sabbath School series on the book of Psalms. I've been really excited as I have begun to go through this quarter. I love the title, The Psalms, Where God and People Meet Heart to Heart. The Psalms are really prayers and hymns. These prayers were personal prayers of a variety of authors as we will study together. One of the prime authors, of course, of the Psalms was David. But as we look at these 150 Psalms, they take you from the heights of jubilation and joy and praise to the very depths of human experience, to fear, to anxiety, to discouragement, and everything in between. So the Psalms really reflect the human experience. They are songs of praise, but also songs of lament, songs of despair. In the Psalms, God becomes our refuge, our strength, our defender, our king, our Lord. The sh we, we, we dwell under the shadow of his wings, many expressions. Uh, he is our fortress. He's the rock beneath our feet. So we see God as, his, as the sovereign Lord, as supreme. Um, I love the way it's put in the introduction to our lesson. It says, the Psalms bear witness to a spiritual journey that's common to many of God's children. The journey begins with a faith that's firmly established and secured by God's sovereign rule and where good gets rewarded and evil punished. As we progress through our study, we'll see what happens when well, the well-ordered world of faith is challenged and threatened by evil. Does God still reign? How can believers sing the song of the Lord in a strange land. So the Psalms take us through that full gamut of, of human emotions. In, Psalm, in lesson one, December 30 to January 5th, the lesson is entitled How to Read the Psalms. One of the first principles in reading the Psalms is understanding that although the Psalms reveal human attitudes of praise, human attitudes of despair, although they reveal that, they are inspired by God. I love what it says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So when you look at the prophetic word of God, it's not merely human thoughts about God, but it's rather a holy men of God speaking. When we read the Psalms, we are reading not simply man's thoughts about God, but we're reading inspired thoughts that God places in the human mind. We're, the Bible itself is inspired by God. And the Psalms, as one of the books of the Bible, are inspired by God. When I was first learning to read the Bible, one of my early teachers said, take your Bible and turn it and cut it right in half. And if you do that, you will come to the book of Psalms. So Psalms is about halfway through the Bible. And um, it is fitting to be there because it connects everything that has come in the past with what will come in the future. The Psalms reveal the journey of faith of all of God's children. Now in our lesson, under Sunday's lesson, it talks about the Psalms in ancient Israel's worship. And we go to Psalm 18, verse 1. Psalm 18, verse 1. The Psalms in ancient Israel's worship. The Psalms were meant to be sung. They were meant to be prayed. Notice Psalm 18, 1. This is really a prayer that is sung by David. I will love you, Lord, O Lord, my strength. Verse 2, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I'll trust. Notice how David's emotions soar. He sees God as his Lord. He sees God as as the strength of his life. He sees God as his rock and fortress. You see the same thing in Psalm 30, 
verse 1. Very similar thought. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O my Lord, I cried to you, verse 2, and you healed me. So here the Psalms were part of the ancient worship of Israel. In fact, in Chronicles and Nehemiah, we find the Psalms used as part of Israel's worship and praise. In fact, in 1 Chronicles 16, 7, David delivers a psalm of praise to Asaph. We've got thanksgiving psalms, we've got praise psalms, we've got joyful psalms, and we have admonishing psalms. In fact, the word psalm in the Hebrew Bible, telium, simply means praises to God, and you have a variety of psalms. So psalms, when you think of the psalms, think of praise, think of prayer, and think of worship. Think of the psalms being sung and think of the psalms being prayed. Now, let's meet the psalmists on Monday's lesson. When you think of the psalms, if I said who wrote the psalms, most likely the response would be David. But yet, we have psalms that certainly David wrote the vast majority of the psalms. But we have psalms written by Levites. We have psalms written by Asaph, psalms written by Korah. Psalms written by Heman and Psalms written by Ezraite. These Psalms that are written by these various authors all reflect their human experience with God. Now, why would God write to have us have them write down these human experiences? Why write down these experiences of joy? Why write down these experiences of fear, anxiety, and even despondency? because they are the full gamut of human experience that we have gone through. And as we see how God is faithful to lead these psalmists through these experiences, we too can grasp the faithfulness of God. For example, in Psalm 25, verse 1 to 5, we find that the psalmist reaches out in trust to God. Look, Psalm 25, verse 1 to 5, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all day. So here's here's a psalm of trust. Trust that God will be his protector. Trust that God will deliver him from his enemies. Trust that God will teach him and guide him. If you go on to Psalm 42, you find a psalm that talks about the longing of God, the longing to know God. Psalm 42, 1. As the deer pants for the water brooks, So pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for the living God. So here is that thirst for God. You go through Psalm 77, it's a a psalm of thanks. Psalm 84 is a cry for help. Psalm 88 is a psalm of praise. And Psalm 89, seeking God in trouble. So some of the psalms mention hardships. Some focus on joy. The psalmist cried out to God to save them and experience his undeserved favor. They glorified God for his faithfulness and love, and they pledged their untiring devotion to him. The psalms are testimonies of divine redemption, and they're signs of God's grace and hope. In the psalms, we find a song for every season. I love the contrast between Psalm 3, Psalm 33, and Psalm 109. In Psalm 3, you have a prayer of thanksgiving for God's defense in trouble. You find that all through the third Psalm, this prayer of thanksgiving, that God is our defense in time of trouble. Let's look at a verse or two from Psalm 3. Lord, how are they that increased who trouble me? Psalm 3, verse 1. Many are those who rise up against me. 
Many are those who say to me, there is no help for him in God. Arise, O God, verse 7, O Lord, save me. You've struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You've broken the teeth of the ungodly. Quite language, isn't it? Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. So here's a psalm that's thanking God for his deliverance in time of trouble. Then you go to Psalm 33, all filled with rejoicing, all filled with praise. You can almost imagine Israel marching and singing the words of Psalm 33. Then you go to Psalm 109, you have judgment on the wicked. Now, some Psalms magnify God. Some Psalms are Psalms of thanksgiving. Some Psalms are Psalms of lament, lament, of heartfelt cries for deliverance. There are the wisdom Psalms that ask God for wisdom, the royal Psalms that point to Christ, who is the uh, sovereign king, and the historical Psalms that recall Israel's past and highlight God's faithfulness. Now, in the Psalms, we see at least four literary devices. We see parallelism in the Psalms. For example, you'll say one phrase, then it's explained by another phrase. I'll give you an example of parallelism in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, and bless his holy name. So you have this parallelism, all that is within me, and my entire being. So the, look for parallelism in the Psalms where you see one thing in the first verse explained in the second verse. Then there's imagery. Well, what's imagery? God is our refuge and strength. You see, he's, he's, I see God with his arms around me as refuge. Or here's another great imagery. Under his wings shall we trust. Well, does God have wings? No, it's an image of the chicks gathering under the hen and being protected. That's imagery. There's something called mirism. Now, you may not be familiar with that. It shows the equality of, of contrasting parts. I've cried day and night unto you. It shows crying without ceasing. And so it's, it's, you, you look for that contrast in the Psalms. And there are word plays in the Psalms. There's an interesting one. In Hebrew, one of the words for God is Elohim. But one of the words for false gods or idols is Elohim. And so God will use that contrast between the true God and all the false gods. So when you're studying the Psalms, look for parallelism, look for imagery, look for this merism, uh, the contrast, and look for these, these word plays in Psalms. There is a song, a psalm for every season. Now the Psalms are inspired prayers. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27, the Bible tells us that we don't know, we don't often know what to pray for. So the Holy Spirit interprets our prayers before God. Romans 8, verse 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Verse 27, now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit takes the thoughts of our hearts and interprets them before God. The Holy Spirit loves when we take God's own words and speak God's words back to him. And the Psalms provide for us the substance for prayer. Has your mind ever wandered in prayer? Has your mind ever not wandered during prayer? Sometimes do you find prayer quite difficult because you wonder what to say, you begin to pray a little bit, and then there's these gaps. By praying the Psalms, you say God's words back to him, and the Psalms express the longing of your heart, and you use these inspired words to pray to God. When I knew we were going to start studying the Psalms for this quarter, I decided each morning when I get up, the first thing I would do in my devotions would read five Psalms a day. And as I read those Psalms, I pray through those Psalms. Let me give you an example. So this morning, I was working through Psalm 25 through 30. And um, as I read Psalm 25, 
I would read like this, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh my God, I trust in you. And I would say, Lord, I'm facing a lot of decisions today. We're facing some critical decisions in a building project at our retreat center that we need a permit for. And I would begin to pray, Lord, I lift up my soul. Lord, I trust you. Um, my health has been struggling since I've come back from Africa. I've been struggling with some pneumonia. I'm just getting over it. And I would pray, Lord, I trust you with my health. And so as I, as I read through the Psalms, for example, verse 4, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. O you, I, on you I'll wait all day. So as I'm, I was reading the Psalms today, Psalm 25 to 30 is where I am, every day, five Psalms, and I read those Psalms. And I say, God, show me your ways. All I want to know is what your way is, Lord, and I want to do that. Lord, teach me your paths. Lord, lead me in your truth and teach me. So the Psalms become really our prayers, not simply David's prayers, but the Psalms become our prayers to God. Um, and the Holy Spirit then speaks through the Psalms and through us as we seek God in prayer. Um, at the bottom of Wednesday's lesson I read, the Psalms provide a spiritual depth that speak to a variety of life situations and crosses all cultural, religious, ethnic, and gender boundaries. In other words, as you read the Psalms, you'll find them expressing hope, praise, fear, anger, sadness, and sorrow, things that people everywhere in every age, no matter their circumstances, face. They speak to us all in the language of our own experiences. And I found that as I'm reading the Psalms each morning and praying the Psalms, as I pray and pray over the Psalms, I feel, I sense that God provides in those Psalms the very strength of my life and the very emotions that I'm going through. Now, <clears throat> we look at Thursday's lesson, the world of the Psalms. Psalm 16, 8, I've set the Lord always before me. Psalm 44, 8, in the Lord we boast all day long. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear that the earth be removed and the mountains carried into the midst of the sea? So uh, we look at uh, Psalm 47, 1 and 2. God performs all things and uh, I can trust him. He is my refuge. He's my judge. And then uh, we look at Psalm, the latter part of these Psalms in this lesson, uh, Psalm 82, 8 and 121, 7. Uh, God preserves me from evil. The world of the Psalms, now this is a key point not to miss. The world of the Psalms is God-centered. It may start with the expression of human emotions, but it ends with this God who sits upon his throne, this God who is our defender, this God who is our refuge, this God who will never leave us and never forsake us, this God who is sovereign. So no matter what happens on earth, God is still working out his will for us. The centrality of God in life produces centrality in worship. The psalmist is aware that God's dwelling place is in heaven, but at the same time, God dwells in Zion, in the sanctuary among his people. God is at the same time far and near, everywhere and in his temple. This is the God of the Psalms. He is the God who is there. I love that old song, just when I need him, Jesus is near, just when I falter, just when I fear, just when I need him most. When I was becoming a Christian, I began <clears throat> to try to memorize the Psalms, not all of them, of course, memorize Psalm 1, Psalm 46, Psalm 91, and um, that those Psalms have been a great blessing to me all my life. I love Psalm 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Whatever his leave does not wither, 
He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the waters, and whatever he does will prosper. In the Psalms, we find God on his throne in control of a wicked, evil world, still working in this world to accomplish his purposes. And we find his promise that if we trust him, we'll be blessed. If we trust him, we'll find peace and joy. If we trust him, he will give us success, not in man's sight, but in heaven's eyes. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you with all of our hearts for Jesus. We thank you for his love, his grace, his goodness. We thank you that every moment of life that we can trust him. Now, Father, as we study the Psalms together, may we find courage and strength in Christ as our refuge, as our sovereign Lord, as our rock, as our fortress, as our defender, as our king. In Jesus' name, amen.